All right, everyone, back here for another video. So if this is your first time on the channel, hi, my name is Alex Temes. I've been trading for over 10 and a half years, and I made over $8.7 million trading, and we'll pop up my broker statements on the screen right now. So today's video is gonna be about position sizing. So now that you have a strategy, now that you have a pattern that works, how do you maximize that strategy with position sizing? So let me give you a quick story. So I used to trade at a very reputable proprietary firm called S&B Capital. And it was super, super, super competitive back there. They sat me next to probably the best trader I've ever seen in my life. He was making 50,000, 60,000, 100,000 dollars in a day. And I was a very competitive person. So I wanted to compete with him. I wanted to get bigger. I wanted to trade larger. So what I ended up doing back then is I would use the same share size on every single stock opportunity. So whether it was a dollar stock, a $5 stock, a $10 stock, whether it was a C setup, a B setup, an A setup, I would use the same size every time. For argument's sake, let's say it was 50,000 shares, right? And what would end up happening is I would make $50,000, lose $40,000, make $80,000, lose $60,000, make $100,000, lose $80,000, make $40,000, lose $20,000. It was very, very inconsistent because it made no sense to use the same size on every single stock. So let me tell you another analogy, right? So let's say you're gonna make a bet if someone is gonna get drunk. In this example, it's my mentor, Bao, the guy that taught me how to trade, right? And he loves, you'll find out. So let's say we're gonna make a bet. And the way that you win the bet is if Bao gets drunk or not, okay? So let's say he goes to Disney World. There's probably a 50% chance he's gonna find his way to getting drunk at Disney World. But if he's at the club and there's a couple cute Asian girls with short skirts and they're drinking Hennessy, there is a 99.9999% chance Bao's gonna get drunk that night. Wouldn't you bet heavy only on those opportunities when he's going to the club rather than those opportunities he's going to Disney World? So it's the same thing in trading. There are certain opportunities, there are certain aspects, certain patterns that we know have an exponentially higher win rate than other patterns, and we should bet heavier on those setups. So let me explain. Remember the first red day setup that we were talking about, where it goes green, 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 thousand percent without a single pull, and then that first day it pulls back that first red day? I actually made $700,000 on INDO when it had that first red day. And it's because I know that the first red day setup is such a high probability, it is a bow at the club probability that I wanna bet exponentially heavier. Whereas if I'm just trading a random stock, I don't wanna bet heavy on that because maybe I'm gonna get random results. So number one is you have to identify what your best setups are and then size up larger when those best setups occur. If you do not know what your best setup is yet, you have not earned the ability to size up yet. So back to the S&B Capital example, I was using the same share size on an A setup, a B setup, and a C setup. So it's no wonder that I was kind of inconsistently trading until I figured out what to do. So number one is identify what your A setup is, your B setup is, and what your C setup is, and size in exponentially larger based on those setups. So for example, just for argument's sake, on a C setup, maybe you should be using 1,000 shares. On a B setup, maybe you should be using 5,000 shares. On an A setup, maybe you should be using 30,000 shares. That's how exponentially your size should increase based on the setup. So for a first red day setup, I'll use 100,000 shares. For a regular short into resistance, maybe I'll use 20,000 shares. And if it's a scalp, maybe I'll use 5,000 shares. So based on the opportunity, if it has a higher probability of working, you wanna size up larger. If it has a lower probability of working, you wanna size up smaller. And again, if you do not know what your best setups are, if you do not know what these opportunities are, chances are you're not back testing your trades, chances are you're not reviewing your trades, and chances are you have not earned the right to size up yet. On all of my big six-figure trades that will pop up on the screen right now, I was sizing up exponentially larger because these were A setups. Now, don't get it confused. There's not gonna be an A setup every single day or every single week or every single month. The way that I think about these setups is this. I would consider a C setup and a B setup as a regular season football game, right? It's great, fine, no problem. But when that A setup comes up, that is called the Super Bowl, okay? And you wanna make sure that you got enough practice during the regular season games, 
the C setups and the B setups that when that A setup Super Bowl comes, that you just hammer it right over, right? So that's the most important thing to understand is number one, grade your setups and size up exponentially larger on those higher probability setups because if the win rate is higher, if it's a bow at the club example, you know there's a 99.999% chance it's gonna work, wouldn't you bet the farm if you could? If I knew something had a 99.999% example of working like bow at the club with a couple of girls Hennessy, I'm gonna mortgage my house, I'm gonna sell my kidney, and I'm gonna bet it all because I know that that setup is a high probability, right? So that's the number one thing to understand. Now, let's talk about when and how to size up now that you've identified this opportunity. I'm gonna give you two examples. One is on MNPR, right? Which was a stock that was moving earlier this week. So if you look at MNPR, I identified that 460 was the key support area on this stock, and I know that when support breaks, it should turn into resistance. So for me as a short bias trader, what I'm looking for is these key areas to break because when they break, they don't come back. In the example of MMPR, I wait and I wait and I wait until that 460 key support breaks and then I attack and you can see it's just straight down. So number one is identify the key support areas, right? That if they break down, the stock will not come back up, right? And you can see from this MMPR example. Another example is OBLG. This death candle here on elevated volume, that is usually a signal of a reversal. So if I have a death candle on elevated volume, that is my first sign that the stock is reversing and I wanna be able to get an entry there. So if you couple a death candle with a key support break on the short side, that is what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for signals, guys. I want to see a reason to attack this stock. And if I'm not seeing that signal, I'm not taking the trade, right? And for a long bias trader, maybe that signal is a breakout over high of the day, a dip down, higher low, and continue. Maybe that signal for a long bias trader is a VWAP reclaim, right? Maybe that signal is breaking news on a stock. So the same things that I use for a short could be the inverse use for a long. But for me, as a short bias trader, I'm looking for a death candle on elevated volume, and I'm looking for a key support break, because when those key support breaks, these stocks are not coming back. The thing that you have to understand about small cap stocks, guys, the stocks that I trade, is they're based on hype. Once the hype dies down, and the money flows to a different stock, these stocks have no reason to continue, right? So understanding these aspects of grading your setups, right? Sizing up exponentially on these setups, right? And waiting for a signal to get you into the setup is how you could turn a small trade into a massive six-figure trade. So if you like this video, if this helped you, please leave a like, please leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I have a few live trading videos, which I'll link up here, and leave a comment of the next topic of video you want me to talk about. I'll see you next time, guys.